Hi, this is How to Operate a Mixing Console, Part 1. I've broken this tutorial down into segments in an effort to uh, make each segment as comprehensive as possible. And uh, in this segment, we're going to focus on the main mixing surface of the console, which comprises uh, most of the uh, top surface you see here. This uh, particular mixer is a Mackie uh, 2404. It's a fairly common mixer and it's also very similar to uh, mixers by other manufacturers. This is an analog mixer. It's designed primarily for sound reinforcement, uh, but it can also be used for recording, and I've actually used this particular mixer for both. Now you're looking at a lot of knobs here, and what you want to keep in mind is as you look across the mixer horizontally, each knob in a horizontal row serves the exact same function, so it does the same thing from channel to channel. As you look up and down the mixer vertically, each vertical row of knobs affects one channel only, although they'll have different functions as you move your way down. We'll start at the top of uh, channel number one here, and the first knob you see is called the trim control. Now this control will adjust your input signal. Different signals may have different levels, and uh, you want to be able to uh, even those out across your uh, input section. Uh, as you move down here all the way to the bottom, just above the fader, you'll see a uh, signal present LED. This is telling me that I've got uh, an active signal here, and I have applied a signal to this channel so you can see that. Now, as I raise this uh, trim control, uh, now I've got a red overload LED, which is telling me I've got too much signal to the channel. And I'm going to back that down a little bit until uh, I don't have an overload light, because that will give me uh, distortion. Right below the trim control is a series of knobs on this uh, particular mixer. There's six, and these are your uh, auxiliary sends. Now, the top one is a uh, pre-fader auxiliary send. It's pre-fader and pre-EQ, which means that if you move the fader or any other controls uh, in this channel, it's not going to affect the signal that's being sent from this knob. Uh, the same goes for uh, aux number two. Uh, it's set the same way. Now we're going to skip the middle two and go to these bottom two aux sends. These are set at post fader. So both of these uh, will be affected if you move the uh, fader uh, or the EQ knobs. And uh, those are good for an effects send. Uh, if you need to uh, send uh, a signal to a digital effects processor, you would use a uh, post uh, fader and post EQ send. Now back to the middle two, these actually have a little button here. It's labeled pre, and if you depress that, it's pre fader, so you can use them as a monitor send. Uh, if you pull that back out again, it's post fader, so you can use these as additional effects sends, depending on uh, what your requirement is. Now right below that is the EQ section, and there's uh, four knobs in this section. The top one is your high EQ. That's what's called a shelving EQ, and that's at a fixed frequency. It's uh, 12,000 hertz or 12K hertz on this particular model. And what that does is if you boost this, it'll boost everything from 12 hertz and up. And if you lower it, you know, below the uh, central position, it will uh, cut uh, everything 12, uh, 12K and uh, above. Uh, the next two are your mid EQ and on this mixer you have uh, what's called a semi-parametric and uh, the top knob in the mid section does the same as your high EQ, it boosts and cuts but the one directly below that actually selects the frequency that you want to cut so it's not at a fixed frequency you've actually got a range of mid-range frequencies here that you can select to either boost or cut just below that is your low frequency uh, control and uh, much like your high frequency that's uh, fixed um, I believe it's uh, at 80 Hertz and uh, it's a shelving EQ so it'll uh, you either boost or cut uh, everything at 80 Hertz or below now just below that uh, low EQ knob is a low cut filter and if you put this filter in, it'll cut everything below uh, 75 Hertz. 
Uh, so you can actually boost 80 hertz and then cut everything uh, off below 75. So that gives you a little bit more control over your low frequencies. Uh, it gives you quite a high uh, degree of control over your mid-range frequencies and uh, some pretty uh, usable uh, control over your high frequencies as well. Uh, now the last knob in this section is the uh, pan pot. Uh, this will pan signals either left or right. Uh, just like uh, on a stereo system. Now just below that you've got a mute switch and what that does is it simply turns the channel on or off. It's got a uh, red LED indicator here to let you know that that channel uh, is not active um, and if it's not whatever is uh, being input to this channel will not be heard uh, in your final mix. Uh, just below that is a solo button. If you depress that the uh, same LED flashes to let you know the solo is activated and what that's used for is your headphone mix. So if you're listening to an entire mix on a set of headphones plugged into this mixer and you hit the solo switch, now you're just listening to this one channel in case you're trying to uh, troubleshoot uh, something that doesn't sound right. You can uh, pull out the rest of the mix and in your headphones just listen to uh, one individual input. And uh, of course the last thing in the row is the fader and this is where you'll do your actual mixing. Uh, your faders will probably be at various levels uh, throughout your mix uh, to get a good balance on uh, whatever you're mixing and right next to that are some routing options. Um, you can either route to the sub bus uh, or you can uh, route to a left and right uh, master and uh, we'll get into more detail on that uh, in a later segment. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you set up each of these individual channels the same until you get up to channel 20. Now on this particular mixer the uh, last two faders are actually stereo inputs. So you can plug in a stereo source uh, such as a CD player or, or an iPod and uh, you can actually have one fader that controls both the left and right channel. And you've got your pan pot here so you can select uh, more left or more right and balance that as needed. Uh, the rest of the knobs are the same with the exception of the EQ section. The EQ in this section you have a high, you've got a high mid and that's fixed, you've got a low mid and that's fixed, and you've got a low frequency selector. The other thing you'll see that's missing is you don't have the low cut uh, filter on these channels because presumably you won't need that for uh, pre-processed uh, recorded music. Uh, also on the EQ section it tells you what uh, cutoff frequencies you're selecting here so if you're familiar with those uh, you can make decisions uh, based on that information. So that's about it for the main mixing surface of the console. Uh, we'll get into some more detail on auxiliary sends and the uh, master section down here on the end in future segments.